eight, seven, one, one, seven, six. We often talk eight, about people with great memories as though it were some sort of an innate gift, three, but that is eight, not the case. Two, six, four, seven, nine. Great memories are learned. Queen of Diamonds, Five of Diamonds, Ace of Spades, Jack of Clubs, King of Diamonds. Uh, here we are almost there. Queen of Hearts, Three of Clubs, Ten of Spades, Two of Hearts, Seven of Spades, Four of Clubs, and wait, Five of Spades. Right. I'd never had a good memory ever. Um, I'd always struggled to memorize things. And these, here the, these people were in a competition saying that they didn't have a good memory and all they did was learn techniques and train it. So I was very interested and I, I, I started learning the techniques. What, what really changed everything was that summer of 2009, my grandmother passed away and she had been suffering from Alzheimer's disease for a while. Even in the last time I saw her, I remember us eating dinner. It was me, my, um, her and my grandfather. And she was asking uh, where I was. <laughs> it was only until that moment that I kind of was like, whoa, that was, I didn't know that that disease would eventually kill her. It made me kind of worry about myself and if that was a hereditary thing or what if I end up like that is, what can I do? Is there anything I can do? So I started to obsessively train. And, and really try to build a workout for my mind. It was kind of like this superpower that I was unleashing. Ten of diamonds, queen of hearts, six of spades, five of spades, jack of spades, ace of clubs, six of diamonds, seven of spades. Nelson Dellis is the 2011 winner of the USA Memory Championship, where he also broke the U.S. record for memorizing numbers and playing cards. And then in 2012, I won all the events, uh, set one new record. I hate to say it, but it was easy. It felt easy to win. I started, I wanted to do something more where I, I would try to reach more people and try to raise awareness and, and, and funds for Alzheimer's disease and Alzheimer's research. So I decided to start a charity nonprofit called, and I called it Climb for Memory. I thought that pairing memory with another passion of mine, which is mountain climbing, would be kind of an interesting, cool, something that people would latch on to endeavor. That's, I think, the first step, is to, to making it become something that's not underfunded, um, is to get people to, to know about it. And I think bringing it to the top of the world or to these really interesting places that people can love are drawn to is a cool way to do that. You put the time in and you kind of stick through the the shitty moments and the uncomfortable times that you'll get to the top and you'll reap the rewards, you know? And I think that's where I really learned that, on mountains. I took my mask away, and it, it because it was, there's a lot of saliva in there when you're breathing through it, it froze. And because I was drinking water or whatever. So when I started to climb again, I put it back on, it was sticking to my face. I couldn't breathe with it. So I panicked and in the panic I just kind of moved my mask away and started just breathing like that. And the Sherpa that was climbing with me said, you know, it's just a few more hours to the top, it's right there. And I was just not responding. There was one section where the rope actually veered off this steep slope. There was a, a dead body that had fallen a little bit and had dragged it down. But the scary thing was that it was a guy who had gone out the night before and he had gotten cerebral edema, which is when your brain swells and you, you go crazy. And he had taken off all his, his warm clothes and he was in his just base layers. 
kind of crookedly frozen upwards at that time you know I'm, i just had this problem and i'm thinking a million things and then you see a live dead dead body the fresh dead body from the night before and it just kind of makes your head spin i, I toiled uh, between the two decisions for an hour and i think the one thing that probably saved me is that i had these strong memories of of, of people back home and moments and I realized, you know, I didn't want to lose that. What's next is I need to try and win my third US championship, compete in the world championships, see how well I do, and then try Everest one more time. If I spend a lot of time on a goal and I don't get it or I fall short of it, I'm going to try hard as fuck to get it back. And they say working your brain, there are reports, right, that working right. your brain can lead yeah. towards maybe that, staving, uh, uh, you know, early Delaying it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not been proven, but people say that that has helped. Um, and if, if it were to happen to me, at least I know that I, I have ways of remembering things if I, you know, I realize that I'm, I'm starting to forget things more easily. The hardest part is, is everybody around the person with Alzheimer's, the family and friends. You know, basically you're deteriorating, you need people to help you, and those people are going to be your loved ones, you know, which you're kind of outcasting by the fact that you don't remember them. I feel like it's an epidemic, but people don't really see it as something. You know, it, it doesn't feel like this tangible disease. But it, it's very damaging. It da damages, you know, family relationships and ties, and it eventually will help make you forget how to function properly. Being fit and, and improving circulation and blood flow to the brain are things that help improve memory. You're given one life with just one body and one mind, you know, you, you got to take care of it. People are aware of that for their bodies, it seems. People know that you should eat right and whatever and be fit, but not many people think like that about their mind. It's equally as important, you know, one doesn't run without the other. You want to actually make these pictures in your mind as weird, over-the-top, bizarre, gruesome, sexual sometimes. Those are really the best things. Those, we memorize that better. It's just the natural thing that we prefer. Where I see people and I see actions and objects flying around and, and doing all sorts of silly things. 75 is my grandfather, and 03 is Jack Black. Um, and Jack Black's action, I think of him in the movie Nacho Libre, um, he's a wrestler. So I think of my grandfather wrestling, and he's like rolling around on the floor. That's George Bush, 72, the ex-president. 74 is Gerard Depardieu the, as a musketeer. So his action is sword fighting. And so I picture George Bush sword fighting, you know, and he's wearing his presidential attire and he's got a, a fencing sword and then to recall it all I'm doing is just walking mentally through that place and seeing the images that I stuck there. I kind of have the system where letters and numbers are interchangeable. Um, a D is a four because it's the fourth letter of the alphabet so when I see a six of diamonds I'm really seeing like a 64 and then that makes me think of Nintendo 64 which makes me think of my brother. That sounds like a lot of work, but it's, it's at the point where I've learned it, and now Six of Diamonds is my brother. No translation needed, I just know it. Like, you know when you see the word dog, what that is. 66 is Satan. Um, I'm gonna picture Satan with double Ds. Um, and the last letters are O-M-I, so I'm gonna be like, oh my god. Satan has double Ds. And he's driving a pimped out BMW. Uh, Y-L-U. Maybe I'm looking at him and I'm saying, why? You're such a loser, right? Why are you driving this car? Why? Loser, L-U. That's not how you spell it, but it sounds like it. Loser. 
to Jason, my friend Jason, driving the stupid truck for him. Why are you driving this truck, you loser? HFU, I think of hi, fuck you. So maybe there's a, a baby in the back seat here. And he's really cute, so I'm just saying, hi, fuck you. 090XPX. P31. 2GD, 346JGH, um, right? The Koopa playing hockey with the ghost. So D66, uh, OMI, I'll say, oh my god. The flatbed, we had God on the back, right? Which was 723, it was JPW. At one point, I decided that each card would be a specific person with a specific action and a specific object. Uh, Edward Scissorhands, Jesus. Another ex-girlfriend, Summer, uh, my dad, Tiger Woods. I'll first choose out a location in my head. So we go to the first place, which is the bedroom, and just look at the first three cards. So the first three cards would be two of spades, two of diamonds, and the king of hearts. So two of spades is Britney Spears. I take the first card and use it as a person. The second card is an action. So it's actually Kobe Bryant, but his action is um, dribbling a basketball. And then I use the third card, uh, it's my dad, but his object is a piece of paper. Just because he's always signing documents, right? So I make a little story of Britney Spears dribbling a piece of paper. I picture that happening in, the, in my bedroom. There's Britney Spears, all sexy, oiled up, and she's dribbling a piece of paper. That's not even possible, but you can picture that, because it's bizarre. So then once I've done this for the rest of the deck, I just go back to where I started, which was in my bedroom, right? And then I picture Britney Spears, right? She was in there and she was dribbling that piece of paper. And then we go into the next room. It was my mom putting lipstick on her hand, right? And that's these three. And then you have my dog on a computer tapping it with a, a sword. Then you go to the TV room. It's C-3PO drinking a wand. On the balcony, it's a sniper punching a dick. Uh, Eric Clapton spinning and dancing in the other room, and then Batman running around a frog, and then in the dining room, Mario golfing pizza slice. <laughs> and then, of course, right up here in front, our current two time champion is Nelson Delvis. Five minute warning and one minute warning, mental athletes, you may begin. I won the cards event, I won the numbers event, I won the names event. Poetry, I got, I think, third place or second place. So I was in to the afternoon round, no problem. The final event is on stage. There's three competitors left, and you're given a, two decks of cards to memorize in five minutes. One by one, the three competitors recite the two decks in order. Get your clubs. Okay. Six of spades. It's like the thing I practice the most. I could do three decks of cards, right, in five minutes. That's what I was practicing even. So it's easy for me. I do it every day. I continued with me and Bram Coley, who was the winner in 2005. I was there. I was like, oh, I, I'm just going to recite the, the two decks. Nine of hearts. Two of spades. Queen of Clubs. Jack of Puff. Okay, hold on. Uh, two of Spades. I lost like a bit of focus for a second and in my mind I said a card that had already just come out and I knew instantly as it was like one of these things where as I said it I knew 
my mind was like, don't say that, why are you saying that? I, that was so stupid, you know, like I, I had it all. And just in a second, I just kind of let it go. So I lost. <laughs>「To win the title at the World Championships, it's, it's tough. Johannes Malo, he's a German. I think he won two years ago. There's another guy, Simon Reinhardt, another German who's equally as good. Boris Conrad, another German. And a, a British guy named Ben Pridmore. Most of them are pretty consistent through what they do, but you never know. I mean, you're memorizing really fast, a lot of information. It's easy to make a mistake sometimes. I, I felt a lot of affinity when I saw what, uh, what you did because yeah. I'm also passionate about mountains. I, I discovered that the mind is much, much uh, stronger than the physical, uh, uh, than, the, than the body. It's amazing that last year I was risking on the Alps my life <laughs> and this year I was risking <laughs> I was risking to forget a card <laughs> set on my table. <laughs> so this is the most exp extreme experience and adrenaline experience that you can live in memory sports but <laughs> it's a different kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, and if you combine the two things I think it's something interesting, amazing. You have to, the two, two sides of, uh, of your life, uh, physical and mind. Uh, and when you add also the spiritual uh, side, uh, you are, I think, complete. But I decided to go from the north side rather than the south. I went south side through Nepal first time, and now this was going to be north side through Tibet. So it's basically kind of like climbing a totally different mountain. To get from base camp to advanced base camp, it was a 17 kilometer walk. And the wind and the cold, it was just a fucking brutal side of the mountain. So I think we're gonna start with names and faces, which is you get a bunch of faces, um, very international, and you gotta memorize as many names, first and last, as you can in 15 minutes. Then it's binary numbers, you get 30 minutes to memorize as many ones and zeros as you can. And then the final one is hour numbers, one whole hour to memorize as many digits as you can. I hold the world record in binary, which is 4,140 digits, and uh, in our cards, 28 packs. I'd, I'd heard about memory techniques, but I thought it was a load of rubbish that someone had made up to sell books, you know, so I didn't believe a word of it. I've, I went along to the competition because I had nothing better to do that couple of days, and um, I've been hooked, hooked ever since. Our forecasts that we got from uh, some weather services in the States were just so off. We get to advanced base camp and then it's like, ah, oh, let's wait a day. It's not looking, the forecast shifted back. We wait another day, same thing. We were just getting nuts. We were going crazy. Dreaming weird things and feel like you're hallucinating, it's just, it's, it puts you in the right state. 101 and 594, Nelson Second day, um, a little more fun. We do abstract images. So they give you these uh, blobs with different patterns on them and you have to remember the order. 
And then we have historic dates, which is really cool. To give a, a page filled with dates and then a, an event that happened that day. Uh, you get five minutes to memorize as many digits as possible and then 15 minutes to recall. The last one of that day is the hour cards. So one hour to memorize as many packs in order as possible. On the mountain, I actually feel like my memory is better and I would keep track of my scores and how they varied at altitude. And the amazing thing was that my scores improved. He's the person, yeah. action, object. You could have a location associated with that last object. Exactly. And then the next, if it's you, her, her, him, that that the set would go to that location, that locate, that object's yeah. location. It splits off. Yeah. And then, now the, the, the real question is, why do people practice with numbers and words and shapes and cards but it's the same as going into a physical gymnasium. If you're in a gym and you're doing a bicycle or you're doing a treadmill or you're doing a rowing machine and you're doing a half an hour, you know, people don't walk into the gym and say, what's the matter with you? you know, That's stupid. You've been on that rowing machine for 30 minutes and you haven't gone anywhere. And you've been on the bicycle machine and you're pedaling away, and you're still in the same place, and you're running on the treadmill, and you're still there. What a waste of time. Not a waste of time, is it? You're in the same place exercising, and your entire body is fitter. Same with exercising your brain. When you are memorizing numbers with images, and you are memorizing cards and stories, then sitting there as you play in your gymnasium, your brain is getting more powerful. Really good reason. Play in the gymnasium of your mind and become a warrior of the mind. We spent an extra night that we didn't anticipate at Camp 2, which is bad. I wasn't even allowed to use my supplemental oxygen because we didn't have enough. because of Luis or I. It's like, it's like having Michael, no, no Jordan, Michael Jordan on your basketball team yeah. and, you know, four other, four other kindergartners. Yeah. Like, See, no, no pressure on Nelson. <laughs> no. So they give you a list of random words in your language of preference and... 15 minutes to memorize, 30 minutes recall. Then spoken numbers is pretty cool. It's memorizing numbers, but it's spoken one digit per second. You get graded on where, up until where you make your first mistake. One, one, seven, six, eight, one, three, three, eight, two, six, four, seven, nine, four, one, six, I was kind of battling with a Norwegian guy, Ola. 
it was kind of going to be decided by speed cards at the end, which is the final event, memorize a deck of cards as fast as possible. And it was really the most tense uh, part of the competition. Deck cards shuffled, just raise your hand. Cards shuffled. You're on something ready? Go! So we don't got your cards up if necessary. They're a lot better than That's the two that I switched. Yeah. I, I didn't get it. I, I was close. I actually had it correct and there were two sections that I wasn't sure about the order of two cards. Yes. And when I was just reviewing it one last time, I said, no, let me switch them back, both of them. And they were both the actual, what I had before. The wind just suddenly would just like blast, right? Right through all my gear. And I needed immediately to open my bag and get my big down mitts. And looking ahead at the first step, you see the line, you know, people are slow. I knew that I wouldn't be able to generate enough body heat to warm these guys up. I had points where I'd wrap and I didn't even really know if I was gripping the, the rope correctly. Stepping over dead bodies and stuff from past seasons in, in the dark. You don't really think like, if I fall, I'm gonna fall and die. The, after the first attempt of the speed cars, many of the best competitors didn't uh, make it. And the reason is they try so fast, so they could have gaps. And they rely on the recall that they, they will actually be able to fill in the gaps. Because they do memorize, but it goes so fast. And sometimes it happens that they swap cards. And if you swap two cards, then you have, uh, yeah, you get five minutes and the score is nothing to, to count on. And it's interesting that all the top players didn't make the first round, so, but they have one more attempt. So it's really, it's really down to the last line. This is really, I'm so nervous. You have one minute remaining. A few seconds, brother, brother. It was at that moment that all these memories started to be really um, vivid and, and, and playing a lot into my decision. So I decided to turn around. We gotta yeah. calculate, but it's really, really close. Because both okay. of them made it. So, so we check all the yeah. all the others. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Germany the, wants the to bronze, check everything. fourth, fifth. <laughs>
Okay. Also very, very close. All the top people got good scores then, which is good. Well, the first time I turned around two years ago, I felt I was destroyed. Like, I cried, I was so emotional. It was like the worst thing that had happened to me. What a failure, you know? And this time it just felt like I was okay with it. I was really happy with my journey. That was the, the biggest thing for me. It's just the whole two months and where I had gone to bed and this mountain brand new side, you know? I loved that, that I did that. It didn't really matter whether or not I had stepped on the top of it. I still feel like I've accomplished something that I never would have ever thought that I could have done. So I ended up in seventh place, just beating out the Norwegian. Ben Pridmore was sixth. Through this whole process of learning about my mind and what's possible and stuff like that, it really has taught me that if there's a skill out there or there's a challenge, I think I can do it. I think I can become the best or one of the best. And I feel like anybody can think like this and do this. It's just a, a, a frame of mind. <laughs> Memories are, are what make us who we are. In the same way that we protect our thousands of photos, you know, by having tons of backup just in case. It's like, why don't we do that for our minds? You can just train your mind to be safe and protect those memories that you cherish and who define you. Right. Nice. nice. Sweet George Brown, Nelson. Nicely done, buddy. That's awesome. Glad we didn't have to carry you the whole time. How much are we willing to lose? from our already short lives by losing ourselves in our Blackberries, our iPhones, by not paying attention to the human being across from us who is talking with us. I'll play, I'll play, I'll play. I'll play. By being so lazy that we're not willing to process deeply. There are incredible memory capacities latent in all of us. But if you want to live a memorable life, you have to be the kind of person who remembers to remember. This is my dog. Tama <laughs> san? Yeah. Um, Asan Nima? Yeah. Uh, Pemba? Uh, uh, Sunge? Sange. 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 Alright. Uh, Dorji? Dorji? Yeah. I don't know. Dorji. 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 That's very good, because I've known these guys for many years. Yeah, we'll and try, I, we'll, we'll test tomorrow and see how it sticks.